Man, wish I could dance. Just Dance is a rhythm game series created by Ubisoft in 2009. It would go on to become one of the most popular rhythm games of all time, with many sequels, spin-offs being released. Today, I am going to go through and play every single game to see if they're actually good or horrible. To make sure I only counted games in the actual series, I have a personal criteria for what makes a Just Dance game. Uh, it has to be developed by Ubisoft, it has to utilize your whole body, and is in some way a rhythm game. So that means no Nickelodeon dance, Just Sing, or Big Time Rush dance party. Now without further ado, let's start with... The original Just Dance was released on November 17, 2009 in North America. It was based off a of side mode in Rayman Raving Rabbits, a party game also developed by Ubisoft, where you would match the poses of rabbits were performing on screen. Ubisoft decided to expand this concept into a standalone game. The idea was to make a rhythm game accessible to everyone, and not just hardcore rhythm game fans. While some executives at Ubisoft thought the game wouldn't sell well due to the fact that people don't dance, Just Dance would go on to be a commercial success, selling 2 million copies worldwide in its first 4 months, and doubling that 7 months later with 4.3 million. The game itself has 4 modes, Quick Play, Strike a Pose, Last One Standing, and Warm Up. Quick Play is a standard dance mode where you pick a song, a short or long version, and follow the coach's moves normally. Strike a pose is where you play a song, but at random points you'll have to freeze. In Last One Standing, you have a limited number of mistakes you can make before you're eliminated, and the Last One Standing wins. And Warm Up is a nearly 5 minute long song where you warm up. Most of the dances in this game are pretty good, Con I Joe and Hot and Cold are a lot of fun. Trick it out and I like to move it are really energetic and they make you put your all into it. But not all dances are created equal. A few of the songs in this game have lackluster dances or are bad songs entirely. If I had to pick a favorite song, it'd probably be Heart of Glass. It's both a good song and has the best dance in the game. There are two songs here that aren't by the original artist but instead covers, Fame and Womanizer. I presume they did this to either save on costs or they weren't able to get the license to Britney Spears or Irene Sierra's voice. The visuals in this game look pretty good for a game release in 2009. The backgrounds are a bit basic, but nice nonetheless. Each song has a unique background fitting the song, kind of. For a majority of the backgrounds, are created with the song in mind, like how in I have the tiger, we got boxing arena, and then I get around, we got like a vaporwave looking beach. And then you have Heart of Glass, where you're in the middle of a green void. The designs for most of the coaches are completely original. Now, the only reason I say most is because some of the coaches are based off the outfits from their music videos. Like Hot and Cold, you have the wedding outfit, and Womanizer, you have that business suit Britney's wearing. The motion detection in the game also felt off. That could be because I suck, but for some of the side modes like Strike a Pose or Last One Standing, it was saying I was moving even when I wasn't, which made Last One Standing hell. The game has a gimmick, even though the whole game is a gimmick in itself, where you have to shake the controller really fast for a moment. It only appears in 8 out of the 32 songs. There are two songs that have you play air guitar with the gimmick, but other than that, the gimmick was pretty bad and not that fun. The game as a whole is fine, it has some good songs, but a majority are just alright. Though it is only the start of the franchise, so they're likely to improve the faults of this game. <laughs> Let's see if the next game is any better. Maybe it'll even get worse. Who knows. Dance on Broadway was released on June 15, 2010 in North America, and is the second installment in the Just Dance franchise. Yeah, that's right, you thought they would just go straight to Just Dance 2, but nope, we gotta tackle the spin-off first. The game has two modes, vocals and no vocals. I, I think you can understand what each mode does. This game also has 20 songs spanning across all of musical theater, and as you can tell, all the visuals in this game were done with CGI instead of actual people, which I'm going to assume was because they wanted to have dynamic backgrounds and camera angles, or they spent all the budget on getting the license for the songs. This leads to the game looking cheap, not helped by the fact the coach's movements are a lot more jerky and less fluid. Speaking of jerky movements, the dances are a real mixed bag. Some of them are actual dances like Good Morning Baltimore, but then you have 
can't just can't wait to be king and my favorite things where you're just crossing your arms and doing an angry finger wag. The lack of any other modes really makes this game feel empty. It feels unfinished in a way. But I will give it this, it has an identity. The main menu being Broadway, the logo looking like a stage, advertising a show, every song opening with a theater, zooming in on the stage, opening the curtain, and playing the song on the musical set. All these little details show they at least cared about the game somewhat. Yet, the dances hold this game back, as it just doesn't feel like Broadway dances. A PlayStation 3 version would be released a year later with improved UI, 8 new songs, and that's all that was added. No m new modes or anything. Oh yeah, how could I forget? They completely changed the title screen and menus to look incredibly basic and have no personality. I'm, I'm just confused on how they looked at all the personality that was in the Wii version, and we're just like... I, I, I just hope the next game are more like the Wii version of Broadway, and less like the PS3 version. Yeah, we got one more spin-off till we get the Just Dance 2. Releasing on August 17th, 2010, Gold's Gym Dance Workout was made as a collaboration between Ubisoft and Gold's Gym. Now, you might be asking, how is this a Just Dance game? Well, if it's my criteria, and it's advertised on the Just Dance YouTube channel and in ads in the game case, so it counts. This game starts with you entering the Gold's Gym and meeting the receptionist. She tells you to make a profile and then create an avatar. After that, we get to choose our personal trainer and get thrown into a tutorial. And then finally, we are allowed to play the game. This game has four modes, Latin Dance, Cardio Boxing, Mini Games, and Warm Up slash Cooldown. Latin Dance is your standard Just Dance gameplay with you mimicking what the coach is doing. Cardio Boxing is more the same with more of a focus on ARV movements. Mini Games are a collection of 12 mini games all utilizing motion controls in the Wii Fit Balance Board, if you have one. Warm Up slash Cooldown is just stretches to get you warmed up or cool down. This is a pretty good game overall. The dances are pretty fun, and after a bit, will make you sweat, which is what you want with a fitness game. The game is also constantly showing you how many calories you've burned. The game advertises over 30 songs, half of them being licensed music, and the rest being original music made for the game. I think. I couldn't find an original source for a lot of the instrumental tracks to use, so I'm assuming it's made for the game? Doesn't really matter that much anyway, because the personal trainer is constantly talking over the music, really giving you the authentic Gold's Gym experience. Now, something that bugged me was the dances are repeated twice in a row, so each dance isn't made with a song in mind. They try to fix this by changing the speed of the dances to make the quicker dance be the harder version, but it doesn't really solve the problem. The minigames are alright. Matador, you're trying to avoid the bulls running at you by tilting the Wii remote left or right. This mode was really hard to get working. The best I could achieve was barely being able to dodge the bulls. Bull riding, you're trying to stay on the bull by tilting the Wii remote in the direction you need. I was also never able to get this one working, as I was constantly falling off the bowl. Canoeing, go as far as you can within the time limit, while a crocodile is chasing you. This one I actually was able to get working, and it's actually pretty fun. Sword fight, cut objects in the direction it signifies with the Wii remote. Really basic and kind of boring. Marathon, go as far as you can within the time limit while a lion is chasing you. Same as canoeing, but not as fun. Jump rope, jump when the rope is near you. I was never able to get this one working. The, the, it just never worked any time I used it. I don't know if I, ju I just suck at the game, but whenever I jump, it just didn't register it at all. I, I, I don't know if it was just me or if it was boxing. Beat the hell out of a kangaroo. Really fun, but I felt bad when I realized that kangaroo just never fights back. Which, ugh. Karate. Chop objects in the direction it signifies with the Wii remote. Same as sword fight, but uh, it has a bit more depth, as now you have to put the right strength in your swing, or else it won't be enough power to break. Just like Dance on Broadway, the presentation of this game is great. 
The game opens with the front desk of a gold gym. The four stages you can play on are based off of real places like California, Sydney, Tokyo, Agra. There's also a, a special stage where you're on a frisbee in the sky in space. The meter on the side that marks if you're on beat or not, it looks really nice. It makes a really satisfying sound when you hit the notes. Overall, the game's pretty alright. This is the only game so far to actually make me sweat. So let's see if they'll be able to prove this in the future. Finally, we are at Just Dance 2. After two spin-offs in one year. It was released on October 12, 2010, and was made to improve upon the first Just Dance game. This is by far the best game. The quality jump this game has to the previous is insane. The backgrounds for each song are more detailed and dynamic, by actually allowing for more than two colors on screen and props in the background. All of the songs are great and some of the best in the franchise, my personal favorite being Dance. The game also has two other versions, a Best Buy and a Walmart version, with exclusive songs not available in the base game or DLC. I didn't realize this until after I'd already bought the game, so I won't be able to play any of the three exclusive songs. Especially Should I Stay or Should I Go, which has never been re-released. So that's fun. The game also feels way more creative than the first, with the Atari looking guys in Move Your Feet and the chalk drawings in the background of Dance, which are actually both references to their music videos. The dances themselves are also way more enjoyable. For one, you're not locked in one spot for the entirety of the dance, they have you walk to the left or right, sometimes even jump. You're also generally moving a lot faster and doing more complex moves than the first game. The coaches also look way better than the ones in the first game. For one, the coaches have more than just two colors in their design, and have a bigger variety of clothing types. We got Egyptian, Russian, Indian, Charo, and workout clothing, and several other types of costumes for the coaches. This game also introduces duets and gold moves. Duet songs have two coaches you can choose from, and allow for even more creative dances that make use of the fact that there are two people dancing such as having each coach do a different dance at the same time, or have the coaches interact with one another. Gold moves are just regular moves, but you have to get them perfect for it to count, and gives you more points than normal moves. These tend to be used for more impactful moves in the song. For the modes, they get rid of Last One Standing and introduce three new modes in its place, Just Sweat, Race, and Medley. Just Sweat is the regular game mode, but there is now a sweat meter in the upper right hand corner keeping track of the calories you burned. Race is where you have to achieve a certain amount of points before the other players get it. And Medley is a compilation of five songs mixed together into a medley. Strike a Pose is still there, but changed into Simon Says, where now it tells you to spin, clap, or freeze. The game also features a new game mode called Contest Winners. This mode differs from the rest as it showcases the contest winners for the Just Dance Talent Search competition. You see, five months before the release of Just Dance 2, Ubisoft held a competition where people could make their own choreography for the song When I Grow Up and the best one would be flown out to Paris and have their choreography recorded for the game. The winners were Sam from France, Manny from the UK, and Liana from America. This is also the first Just Dance game with DLC. Sadly, since the Wii eShop shut down, I am no longer able to purchase the DLC, so I won't be able to play these songs. But I can look at them, and I will say, they look even better than some of the songs in the base game. Other than that slight blunder, this is my favorite game so far. I think this is a great sign of things to come for the future of the franchise, and I can't wait to see what they have in store next. Just Dance Kids is a game that was released on November 9th, 2010, and was made to be a child-friendly Just Dance game. This is the worst game in the franchise by far. The songs... Uh, dear. Dear God, the songs. Normally, these would be some of the best parts of the game, but Ubisoft had the brilliant idea to make every single song a cover, but not just any cover, but a cover by a child who can't sing. This makes songs that would normally be great, like All Star and Funky Town, astronomically worse. But the thing is, 
the vast majority of the songs are nursery rhymes, so there's a very low likelihood of you enjoying the music in the first place. Not to mention, this game features the worst renditions of the ABCs I have ever heard. The coaches are just children costumes, they're not even stylized, it is literally just children dancing in wacky costumes in front of a green screen. Speaking of dancing, the dances have regressed back to being stuck in one place moving your arms. They are the most mind-numbing dances in the series, and the shake mechanic returns from the first game because everyone just loved that mechanic. I, I will give the game this. The backgrounds look nice, they're colorful, rounded, and fit each song pretty well. I also like how all the menus look like they are drawn with crayons, really pushing that childhood feel. Ants Go Marching is one of the more tolerable songs in the game. Now, remember when I said every song was a cover? Well, I lied. There are six songs that aren't covers. That's because these are songs by The Wiggles and Yo Gabba Gabba. These six songs are probably the best in the game due to it being sung by a natural singer and not a child. I, j I just don't get the point of this game. Just Dance is already a series targeted and that can be played by all ages. So why not, like, why make this game targeted towards toddlers? The only reason I can think of is just having a game for like overprotective parents to get for their kid as like the safe option. Which judging by the trailers is definitely the target demographic. I am I am I am praying the next game is better than this. Oh, thank God. Michael Jackson The Experience was released on the 23rd of November in 2010, being made as a celebration of Jackson's career. This is the best Just Dance game I've played. This game features two modes, Dance and Dance School. Dance mode is where you play the songs, and Dance School is where you can learn how to actually do the dances from Jackson's music videos. Now, I could honestly care less about dance school, but I think it's pretty neat that it's there in the first place. It's giving people who want to learn these dances a way to actually learn them. Visually, this is the best game yet. Every song is a reference to their respective music videos, with Jackson even wearing the same outfit as he did in said music videos. For the three songs that don't have a music video, the devs just got creative and put him in a location that fit the song. And with the combination of the pre-recorded visuals in the gorgeous 2D art this game has. It looks fantastic. My personal favorites are Leave Me Alone and Billie Jean. Leave Me Alone only takes inspiration from the first few seconds of the music video and just runs with it, and runs with it greatly. It adds some more newspaper clippings and even the Time Magazine. Then they have like the text appear on the sides of the newspaper, and then when the Time Magazine appears, it all just disappears, and then it, it, it actually keeps appearing. It, oh, I, I just love this background so much. For Billie Jean, it's just a one-to-one -one recreation of the music video, with every location lining up with how they appear in the music video, down to the tiles lighting up in the road and the cut-ins. The dances are great. They're a mix of original dances and dances from the music videos, which make for a lot of fun and energetic dances. Now, as you can tell by the footage, I am playing the Wii release of the game, but there are seven other versions of this game. A PSP, DS, PS3, Xbox 360, 3DS, iOS, and Vita version. The PS3 version is identical to the Wii release, just in HD. The PSP version has similar gameplay to Taiko no Tatsujin, with the notes coming in from the right side of the screen to the left, where you hit the note in a circle. And just like in the Wii and PS3 version, it has stages based off of Jackson's music videos. But unlike the Wii and PS3 versions, not every stage is based off its music video. It cycles through the same few backgrounds like Gold's Gym Dance Workout. The DS version is a port of the PSP version, but the gameplay is now just Elite Beat Agents, where you have to tap on the circles at the right moments. For the 360 version, they made it to where you would be put on the screen in the middle and have you dance or sing. You see, the 360 version is also a karaoke game, so much so that it has some songs that are straight up just karaoke. This version has the stages inspired by the music videos, but very loosely. 
they're more so like skins to a base stage. To make up for that, they, it actually has parts in the music video play in the background of some of the songs. The 3DS version of the game is actually pretty unique gameplay-wise. In the top screen, a set of arrows or circles will appear on the edges of the screen, and when the arrows overlap with one another, you swipe in the direction the arrow was in, and if it was a circle, you press a button. The iOS and Vita versions are just ports of the 3DS version, with minor changes to it to make it more suitable for each respective version. Now I hope this game is a sign of things to come, as this game has basically set a quality standard for the series, I feel. And I'm hoping we can stay at that quality, or even surpass it in the future. Just Dance Summer Party was released on July 19th, 2011, and was made as a physical release of all the DLC, and Best Buy exclusives in Just Dance 2. Kind of. The game was meant to include all of the DLC and Best Buy exclusives, but for some unexplained reason, Come On Eileen, Crazy Christmas, It's Not Unusual, Should I Stay or Should I Go, and Spice Up Your Life were scrapped from the game for unknown reasons. The songs they did keep in the game are probably some of the most creative and fun dances in the franchise. Here Comes the Hot Stopper has the coach constantly try to get rid of a rabbit while doing this dance. Song 2 follows multiple coaches snowboarding down a mountain. Kung Fu Fighting is portrayed as a fighting game. There's just so much creativity in this game. The dance moves are great as well. You're constantly moving around to fit the overall tone and mood of the summer party the game is trying to portray. The songs themselves are fantastic. Nine in the Afternoon, Funky Town, American Boy, You Can't Hurry Love, Mamba Number 5, and are only a few of my personal favorites from this game. Overall, this is a fun compilation of all the DLC in Just Dance 2, making for one of the best games in the franchise. It's going to be hard to knock this one down. The Smurfs Dance Party was also released on July 19th, 2011. It was meant to be a tie-in game to the Smurfs movie, released the same year. This game features two modes, Dance and Story Mode, a first for the series. Dance Mode is your standard Just Dance gameplay, and Story Mode follows the plot of the movie, with cutscenes giving you the plot as you go along dancing. The cutscenes are a mix between Papa Smurf retelling the story and clips from the movie itself. This is a surprisingly fun game. Most of my enjoyment came from the Smurf models because... Look at them. But some of the dances are actually really enjoyable as well. Another piece of enjoyment came from Gargamel. Gargamel has the best dances in the game because of how energetic he is. Just look at him go! Another thing that makes the Gargamel songs great is the fact that he just sings some of himself. It just adds to the insanity of the songs, especially when you have lyrics like Like what do you mean there is a smurf cartel? This game also has achievements you can get by doing specific tasks. But when the game tells you you've achieved one of them, they just have a PNG of a smurf appear, and it is just the funniest thing when you are playing this. You also want to know the funniest thing this game did in general? It was released 20 days before the movie was out. That means this game spoils the entire movie for anyone that bought it. Overall, this game is just fun and goofy, something to play with your friends for a good laugh. Just Dance 3 was released on October 7th, 2011. Once again, the team has done it and made the best game in the series once more. The game improves even further than what Just Dance 2 does, with almost every background having some sort of moving element to them. The background for Forget You is an old TV set with the foreground having the border of a TV. Hey Boy and Hey Girl has this weird dupe of the coach multiple times in the background in the shape of a circle. And She's Got Me Dancing is a campsite. The coaches have also improved once more on the creativity side. We have a TV head person that plays clips from Just Dance 1, which is the coolest thing the series has done yet, two cartoony robots, literal Power Rangers, a mermaid and a scuba diver, and so, so many other great designs. The song choices in this game are some of the 
best yet. We got California Girls, Take On Me, Baby One More Time, I Don't Feel Like Dancing, Forget You, Boogie Wonderland, The Funk, and so many other great songs. We also have our first Disney song in the franchise, This Is Halloween, which is an interesting choice for a Disney's first song in the series. We also have the first song to feature returning coaches in Hungarian Dance Number no. 5. It features the coaches from Rasputin and Body Movie dancing in the backstage of Just Dance 2. The game, just like the last, has a Best Buy and Target version with exclusive songs. Best Buy has Teenage Dream and E.T., while the Target version has Only Girl in the World and Airplanes. The Best Buy version is the better choice of the two, having two Katy Perry songs, with Teenage Dream having a changing coach and background, while both of the Target exclusives have basic backgrounds and all right looking coaches. So I got the Target version, obviously. After every dance, you now acquire mojo points, based on how many stars you got in the song. The more mojo points you get, the more stuff you can unlock. You see, the game locks all of the modes and some of the songs behind mojo points. Most of the points a single person can get is 5, and to unlock everything in the game, you will need 650 points. For a group of 4 people, this is a pretty reasonable amount, but for a single person, this is hell. I played this game by myself. I was not able to unlock everything. The game has Just Sweat, Simon Says, and Melody returning from Just Dance 2, but also introduces new song types instead of game modes. Mashup is the first of these new song types, with it being a song from the base game, with dances from other songs sprinkled in there. The fun part about Mashup is that whenever it changes the dance, the coach for that dance appears and does the dance! My only gripe with this mode is that the background for it is just colors, nothing too cool or creative, just colors. I feel like they could have made it like a party background or a show stage, kind of giving an in-universe reason for why all the coaches are there. The other two song types are alternate routes for I Was Made For Loving You and Barbara Shanson. For I Was Made For Loving You, we got a sweat version, which is more of an exercise focused version of the dance. And Barbara Shanson, we got an extreme version of the dance, which is just a hard dance for the song. The game also introduces Dance Crew and Hold My Hand. Dance Crew is just quartet songs where there are now four people dancing to the song. Hold My Hand are songs where you need a person to hold your hand as you dance. Only two songs were formatted like this, one being an alternate route for Gay On Up, Gay On Out. The Xbox and PS3 versions of the game are almost identical to the Wii version, with the only difference being the exclusive songs to the PlayStation version, and exclusive mode to the Xbox version. The exclusive songs in the PlayStation version are Jambo Mambo, Baby Don't Stop Now, Twist and Shake, and Soul Searching, all of which are pretty good picks. The exclusive mode in the Xbox version is Just Create. Just Create is where you get to make your own dance for the song, with the Kinect recording it. This game, like Just Dance 2, has DLC, and just like Just Dance 2, I can't play any of it because the Wii Shop channel was shut down. This game actually has the most DLC in the entire franchise, which is mainly because the majority of the DLC is just ports of older songs, and that's because this was the first mainline Just Dance game to release for Xbox and PlayStation, so they wanted to make sure these new players got the opportunity to play these older songs. Just Dance 3 only got 11 new songs, 5 being exclusive to the Wii. The first Wii exclusive is Just Mario, which is the World 1-1 theme with Mario dancing to it. They even made him fit in with the series by making his skin completely white like every other human coach in the series. The other 4 Wii exclusive DLC is the PlayStation exclusive songs. The other 6 songs are exercise themed dances, with new music made for them. Kinda of weird how they never put the PlayStation exclusives on Xbox, but uh, yeah, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Now, there is one more song that is from Just Dance 3, but was never made available to the public. You could only play the song if you had entered the Daddy Just Dance contest, a contest made by the popular French sugar distributor, Sugar Daddy. This routine had a brand new coach and two sugar cubes in the background dancing to the song Daddy Cool. Now, the dance itself is great, it has a disco club thing going on which fits great with the song, Daddy Cool. The background is a bit lackluster, being the same as Only Girl in the World, but the fact we even got a new song for the contest is impressive enough. 
these games keep getting better and better. I'm now actively excited to see how the series continues to improve on the next entries. Just Dance Wii was released on October 13th and would be the first Just Dance game to be released and be exclusive to Japan. This game has 17 exclusive songs and 11 returning from Just Dance 1 and 2. All the exclusive tracks are popular Japanese songs, I think. I, I, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm not Japanese if you couldn't tell. The backgrounds and coaches like usual are great. We got schoolgirls dancing in front of a cinema, a delinquent under a bridge, this girl dancing on a port which has the sun slowly set over the course of the song, and a guy in the warehouse dancing while realistic explosions happen behind him. The song picks from this game are pretty good. This is my first time listening to a lot of these songs, and I don't dislike any of them. They're all enjoyable tunes to dance to. And that's uh, all I gotta say. G game's just fun. <sighs> Just Dance Kids 2 was released on October 25th, 2011 for the Wii, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360. This game is marginally better than the first kids game. A majority of the songs are actual pop songs this time instead of nursery rhymes, all of which are still covers sung by children, but I'll take these small victories. The songs also now have the option to be in different languages, which allows for some amusement. Hearing the Gummy Bear song in German is kind of funny. The dances are also a, a little better, there's a lot more movement this time, and uh, some of them even get to go left or right. I'm just still confused why this game needs to even exist. Most of the song in this and in the previous game have already adapted to the main series, and the majority of the ones that aren't are either songs from preschool shows or nursery rhymes. The main series is not only more creative, more fun, but also better made. Most of the kids' games look cheap and have not aged as well as the mainline series. These games just feel like a waste of development time. The Black Eyed Peas Experience was released on November 8th, 2011, being made as a collaboration between Ubisoft and the Black Eyed Peas. The Wii version of the game has gameplay similar to the mainline Just Dance titles, with you following the choreography of a pre-recorded person. The visuals for this one are, uh, not very good. For some reason, they decided to put this pixel filter over the coaches, which makes everything look blurry. The backgrounds are either references to the music videos or a club. They also have the music videos for the songs played in the background, which is neat, I guess. I feel like this is just some covering up for how lazily put together some of these backgrounds are. Most of the backgrounds are just still PNGs with just some flashing lights. The music is... alright. I'm personally not a fan of the Black Eyed Peas, but I was able to enjoy a few of the tracks. The game also rewards you for completing each album, with a thank you from each of the members of the Black Eyed Peas, which is neat, I guess. Maybe if I was a fan of the Black Eyed Peas, I would enjoy this more, but alas, Tabo thanking me gives me no excitement. This game also has an Xbox version, which has gameplay similar to that of Gold's Gym Dance Workout, surprisingly enough, with you following the movements of the coach with no pictograms and getting a heads up on the next move instead. The backgrounds are also similar to that of Gold's Gym Dance Workout, with it changing between different clubs, including this neat cage one. You can also create an avatar just like Gold's Gym Dance Workout. I'm beginning to see a pattern here. Both versions of this game are pretty equal in quality, which is not very good. Both have pretty mediocre dances and lackluster visuals. Hopefully the next game can bring the quality back up to the mainline series. Appa Yukon Dance was released on November 15th, 2011, and was a collaboration between the Swedish pop group Abba and Ubisoft. This game features three game modes, Dance, Mini Musical, and Karaoke. Dance is the standard Just Dance gameplay of the series, Mini Musical is a musical for the game, consisting of six songs, and Karaoke is Karaoke, with footage from the music videos being played in the background. 
The visuals in this game are great. Unlike Michael Jackson and the Black Eyed Peas experience, they couldn't pull much from the music videos for the backgrounds and coaches, as most of them are just the band performing. Even then, they still pulled some of the costumes and visuals from the videos. But for the most part, a lot of the backgrounds and coaches have original designs, such as I'm a marionette being in a doll shop where you play as either a ballerina or a marionette, and even having their dances look like they're being manipulated by a puppeteer, or for Dancing Queen, the prom night version, having you dance as the prom queen on the dance floor. The mini musical mode is the most creative the game gets with it making its very own musical for the game. The musical is called Welcome to Arlington and is a classic high school love story between Betty and Butch, with Alice and Annie there to support their friend. It's shocking how much effort they put into this mode, as a ABBA musical already exists, so they didn't have to make an entirely new one for the game, but they did it anyways. They even have a curtain call at the end which is really neat. Overall, this game is great. It's one of the best games in the series. Just Dance Best Of was released on March 30th, 2012 for PAL regions only. This game is songs from Just Dance 1 and 2 packaged together. The songs they chose to put in this are pretty good. We got Cosmic Girl, Move Your Feet, Mamba Number no. 5, Toxic, and Rasputin. I do feel like they left out some pretty good songs though, like Walk Like an Egyptian, Dance, Heart of Glass, 90 Afternoon, and Funky Town, just to name a few. They did do a re-release of this game in America, titled Under Greatest Hits on June 29th, 2012. This is such a weird game, because the only reason it exists is because Just Dance 1 and 2 weren't released on Xbox or PlayStation, which is the only reason someone should get this game, because you can just get Just Dance 1, 2, or even Summer Party on the Wii. But regardless of that, this is a pretty fine game. Just Dance Wii 2 was released on July 26, 2012, and it's the second Japanese exclusive Just Dance game. And just like the previous Japanese game, this one is great! The visuals continue to be wonderful and creative, with Maru Maru Mori Mori having a background looking like a child druid, because this is a children's song. Mickey Mouse March has a... whatever the hell is this? Body and Soul has you dancing on the rooftops while it switches between day and night. The dances are also great and fun, especially Go Go Summer and Pon Pon Pon, which might be the best dance in the series. They just have a really fun flow to them, and that's honestly all I have to really say for this game. It's just really fun and entertaining. Just Dance 4 was released on October 9th, 2012, and it's the last number title in the series. Like usual, the Just Dance team has made the best game in the series once again. The visuals have been taken in a new direction, everything now being less neon and more realistic looking. The backgrounds are the most creative they've been yet, with being inside a pinball machine, an America's Got Talent stage, being on fruit, the street of Naples, the fabric of time and space, the inside of a phone, an elevator, just to name a few. The song choices are the best selection we've had yet. Never Gonna Give You Up, Wild Wild West, The Time of My Life, Living La Vida Loca, Oh No, and Rock Lobster Baby. We also have two of the best songs in the entire franchise, Crucified and Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Both songs have relatively simple dances, but are fun as hell, and it fits so well with the music. Like the square formation in Crucified, and the jumping in and out and Can't Take My Eyes Off You, both are just so good. We also got a new feature called Auto Dance, which during songs on the Wii U, PS3, and Xbox, you will be recorded while you dance. This is a neat little feature the game has, and can have really goofy results. Speaking of dances, this game has some of the best in the series. There is a specific energy to these dances that make them so fun. The slow and smooth movements of Love You Like a Love Song that get staggered when the song stutters. The suave dances mixed with the fighting and living La Vida Loca. And the constant moving and jumping in the final countdown. Every game mode from the previous games have been removed except for Mashup and Just Sweat. To make up for this, they have added two new modes, one of them being exclusive to the Wii U. 
For the mode that's in all versions of Just Dance 4 is Dance Battle. For this mode you pick one of two coaches to fight against one another, and I mean that literally. For a lot of these, you can see the two coaches duking it out with one another. Overall, pretty fun mode that shows off the coaches' personalities more. For the Wii U exclusive mode, we got Party Master, which is just mashup, but you get to choose what the next dance is, which is neat, I guess. Just what has also been reworked now to have an exclusive song made by Ubisoft to start it off. We also got alternate routes, returning with 4 extreme routes, 1 handed hand route, and 5 unique routes. Now, to unlock these alternate songs, you need to gamble. You see, Mojo returns in this game, but it's been reworked a bit. When you reach a specific amount of points, you can level up and spin a roulette to get either a profile icon or a song. For DLC, we got 4 returning tracks and 15 new ones. There are also two songs you could only get through buying Cheetos. You see, PepsiCo and Ubisoft teamed up to lock two songs behind codes. The songs they chose for this were You Make Me Feel and Brand New Start. You Make Me Feel has Chester Cheetah appearing in the background from time to time, and at the end having him dance alongside the coach. Brand New Start, from what I can tell, has no Cheetos branding anywhere. It's just an explorer dancing outside a tomb. Strangely enough, You Make Me Feel would later be released as DLC with all Cheetos marketing removed, but Brand New World has never been re-released, making it the rarest Just Dance song. This game overall is just really fun and is the best game I've played yet. It's going to be hard to try to top this game, but like, they've done it before, so I'm sure they'll do it again. Just Dance Disney Party was released on October 23rd, 2012 as a collaboration between Ubisoft and Disney. Now, you think going into this game it's going to be like the mainline games, but with Disney songs. But I'm afraid you've been misinformed. This is a Just Dance Kids game with Disney songs. But unlike Just Dance Kids, this game's actually good. This game consists of 25 songs, 14 from their movies, 10 from their TV shows, and 1 from a theme park ride. This game has some pretty good song choices like Be Our Guest, Monsters, Hang In Their Baby, and I've Got A Dream, all of which are like their original counterparts with no covers in sight, especially ones sung by children, except for when the singer of the song is actually a child. It is strange how they left out songs from Aladdin, Hercules, and Mulan, but hey, they could always put songs from these in the mainline titles. The backgrounds are also great, a lot of them have moving elements to them, like in Everybody Wants to Be a Cat, you can see the cats playing with instruments in the background, papers flying, and a cat hanging from a chandelier. The dances are also great, they're also full of energy and it just makes you really want to give it your all into it. Overall, just a fun game that shows that they can make a Just Dance Kids game work, they just need to make it good. The Hip Hop Dance Experience was released on November 13th, 2012, made to be a dancing game with a hip hop twist. This is just the Black Eyed Peas experience but with different music. N no really, it has the same dancing system, cycles through the same 5 or so backgrounds, goes music videos in the background, and has all the same problems I had with the Black Eyed Peas experience. Honestly, you should have just saved these tiles for the mainline game. The Autodance app was released on September 27th, 2013, I think. There's not much information on this game. This is a mobile port of the Autodance feature in Just Dance, allowing you to create your very own Autodances from your phone. You can share these videos online with friends and family or anyone else. The quality is what you expect from this type of app. Low, but really funny. Sadly, the app has been removed and delisted from both the Google Play Store and App Store, so you can't experience, uh, this. But you still have it in the mainline series, so it, uh, lives on in there. Just Dance 2014 was released on October 8th, 2013, and it's the first game to have the year moniker. This game is great! It's on par if not better than 4. Its backgrounds are some of the most creative yet, with graveyards, a nice dinner, an office building, and Japan! 
And like usual, almost every background has a moving element to it. They even have references to older songs in the backgrounds of some of the songs. Like in Just Dance by Lady Gaga, you have the past coaches in the stained glass windows, or having the Spectronizer gameplay in the background of Nitrobot. Some of the songs here also just take you on a journey, like Gentleman taking you through the world, or She-Wolf having the coach break out of ice, fiddle around with her ice powers for a bit, and then go off into the snowy mountains, but in the end, she gets frozen again. Or in Starships, where I, I don't even know how to describe this. The coaches are quite interesting this time around. We got a German couple, a hippo, fruit, Ray from Neon Genesis Evangelion, a gentleman. The coaches from Rasputin, Moves Like Jagger, Viva Las Vegas, Dare, Returning, and a whole ass family. The song choices, just like 4, are some of the best in the franchise. Get Lucky, Careless Whisper, It's You, I Kissed a Girl, Candy, and many, many more. Prince Ali is our second Disney song in the mainline games, and actually uses characters from the movie in the dance this time. Speaking of which, the dances in this game are great! Aquarius' choreography is a massive step up from how it was on Dance on Broadway, with way more movements, personality. Love Boat has a graceful and smooth dance, which fits its love song theming. Come On has an upbeat and energetic tone that's really similar to Gargamel's dances from Smurf's Dance Party, strangely enough. Modes in this game are the exact same as in 4 with some new additions. Mashup, Puppet Master, now renamed Party Master, and Auto Dance are the same as they've always been, just what has been regressed to how it was in 3 and 2. Dance Battle only requires you to win 3 matches instead of 5 to win, and Alternate Routes has the same gimmicks to them, like the more workout focused routes, the harder extreme routes meant for hardcore fans, an object-centric route that has a focus on an object, and the creative and quirky routes. But we have a new type of route to introduce in this game, the on-stage route. These take the form of trio songs where we have the main dancer in the center and two backup dancers on the sides. They even have lyrics right in the middle so you can sing right along with them. On stage is fun and all, but I don't think we needed six of these routines in the game. The World Dance Floor mode is the online mode for the game. In this mode, everyone votes for the song they want to play, and whichever wins is the one you play. For songs that have more than one coach, you compete to get the most stars for the coach you picked. When you get a song with only one coach, you battle for a topic like Beauty vs. Beast or Mars vs. Venus. This mode and the rest of the songs in this game award you with Mojo Coins, which you can use to unlock alternate routes and avatars. Just like every mainline game since 2, this game also got DLC, with 9 returning tracks and 20 new tracks, 5 being alternate routes, which is neat. We also have two songs that could only be gained through events and codes. One of them is Waking Up in Vegas, which you could only get by buying a bag of pop chips with the Just Dance branding on them. You know, pop chips. Everyone's favorite chip brand. These taste like shit. The other event was for Safe and Sound, and it was exclusive to Canada because to gain the code, you would need to buy Garner Fructious Shampoo or Gel. Like I said earlier, this game is on par if not better than 4. It's going to be incredibly difficult to beat these games in terms of quality, but I think the team can do it. Just Dance Kids 2014 was released on October 22, 2013, and is the last Just Dance Kids game. This is the best Just Dance Kids game. Most of the songs are still covers by children, which ruin songs like Fireflies, Get Down On It, The Hustle, and Walking On Sunshine. Backgrounds haven't improved since the last kids game, along with the dances and all the personality is gone from the menus now. The only good thing this game has is the new mode they introduced called Dance Director. This mode allows for the person with the Wii U gamepad to pick from four options to have the main people dancing act out certain actions, and reward the player with points, like dancing together, dancing like a shark, dancing really fast, or uh, dancing like a penguin. Other than that, this is another bad kids game. At least Ubisoft realized kids games don't need to exist, because after this one, we will never have to deal with Just Dance Kids ever again. 
Just Dance Wii was released on April 3rd, 2014, and it's the third and final installment in the Japanese Just Dance games. I will say, this is the best Japanese Just Dance game. The dances and backgrounds for this game are fantastic and really creative, like in Dance My Generation, Iku's Iku, 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 Kato Shoujo, or Mimishi. Just overall, a really good game. Just Dance 2015 was released on October 21st, 2014, and is our first dip in quality in the mainline series. Yes, I am sad to say, this is the first mainline title I have played that is just okay. Bad, some might even say. I'm conflicted on how I feel about the backgrounds. On one hand, we have some pretty good ones like a park, space debris, an 80s action adventure, and an airplane safety demonstration. But then you got 10 that are just void with colors. This just feels like the devs ran out of time with these songs. Even some of the songs that aren't void feel really lazy, like the diamond song has diamonds on the floor, and that's it. Black Widow starting with an alright background going into a really awful background. Or the best song ever just being Sky. It's just Sky. It doesn't make sense in the context of the dance and definitely not in the context of the song. I feel the same way about the songs as I do the backgrounds. You got some really good ones like Walk This Way, Burn, Ain't No Mountain, but then you got X Mystery, Dark Horse, Tetris? What does the fox say? This is by far the worst selection of songs in the series since Just Dance 1. The dances at least are still good, for the most part. You get to do a fun little jig and birthday, Beatty Gonzalez and Love Is All have that fun creativity from the past few games. The Macarena is actually in Macarena, which you would think would be a given, but the series has messed that up before. You might have noticed from the footage that some of these routines actually have the camera zooming in and moving around, which is a new thing for the franchise. This can allow for more dynamic shots and creativity. Unfortunately, most of the routines don't use it, and the ones that do are the goddamn void backgrounds. With all these setbacks, you'd be surprised to know that this game has one of my favorite routines in the series. You spin me around. It has a stellar background with TVs stacked on top of each other. The dance is great, especially the scooch over to the side and the little finger wag. And then having it start with a VHS effect, just, oh, it's just icing on this delicious 80s cake. The modes are very disappointing this time around. Dance battle is gone, just what has been reduced once more, now to just being a playlist. Mashup, Party Master, Alternate Routes, and World Dance Floor all return with no changes. We also get new modes in Community Remixes and VIP. Mashup is quickly becoming my least favorite mode in the series. It just feels like a cheap way to fill space in these games now. Alternate Routes, my, my poor child, only has 8 routes this time, instead of the 28 in 14, making this feel like the least amount of alternate routes ever. That's not to say the quality isn't there, it certainly is. The alternate route for What Does the Fox Day saves the song for me, and Happy Sing Along is a fun and reminiscent of the onstage routes. Speaking of, onstage and extreme routes are just missing, which sucks because I saw potential in onstage if they worked it out some more, and extreme routes are just some of the best in the series. Community remixes are what they sound like, people from the community dancing to the song stitched together. This is a pretty nice mode. Unfortunately, all the community remixes, except for Happy, were removed from the game when all the servers got pulled, so I will never be able to play any of them. VIP is similar to community remixes, except now it has popular people. We got the Just Dance team, uh, Santa Claus, uh, Tyler Oakley... Smosh? Yeah, so with the VIP, they got popular YouTubers to do some of them to get their fans to buy the game. 
and I'm telling you right now, the audience for Smosh and Just Dance do not cross over at all. And just like the community remixes, when the servers were shut down, all these became unavailable to play. The DLC, just like the base game, is disappointing. We got 10 new tracks and 16 returning tracks, which is a depressing number for both. The game would later get a Chinese version on May 20th, 2015, making it the first Chinese Just Dance game. This version has none of the online content and adds three new exclusive songs. Dancing Diva, a pretty good song with good visuals. Us Under the Sunshine, a great song with a dance about a group of kids graduating and celebrating. And Little Apple, an alright song with Isaac Newton dancing with the apple that helped him discover gravity. God, I wish I had the creativity to come up with that. Anyways, this game blows. It's sad to see a mainline game be this bad. Hopefully we can pick right back up with the next game. Just Dance 2016 was released on October 20th of 2015, and we're finally back to some quality. The backgrounds are great, we do have some void-like backgrounds, but they are way more visually appealing this time constantly changing and fitting with the song. A lot of these are also some of the best backgrounds in the series. Let's Groove looks like it was pulled straight from the 80s. I'm an Albatross takes place within a music box. Kaboom Pow is another comic book inspired background, but this time we're traveling through the pages of one. Fun is a throwback to the style of backgrounds in Just Dance 2 and 3. When the rain begins to fall is like holding off for a hero, but more inspired by Mad Max. Uptown Funk has past coaches appear throughout the song, and Hey Mama on a rising platform with hundreds of soldiers appearing in the background. The song choices this time are also great. Coco Cabana, Heartbeat Song, Born This Way, Lights. We also have You're the One That I Want, the first Grease song in the series, and the first musical song not to be in Dance on Broadway first. We also got another uh, song from a video game, Balka Blast Remix from Angry Birds. A lot of the routines in this game are great. William Tell Overturn is the most chaotic dance in the series yet, with you constantly jumping, running, and then having an interlude in the middle where you do a little ballet. No Control has the coaches in this paper cutout style, which allows them to pop more in this fantastic background. It also has a fantastic dance. The Panda is back with another insane dance, this time in I Got a Feeling, and God, it is such a fun dance. And then we got Livan Polka by Hatsune Miku. The background for the song is pretty good, being a bunch of LED screens that constantly change throughout the song. We also have two platforms on the side which summon more Miku holograms. And I say more because the main Miku is also a hologram, because she is slightly transparent. All the modes from Just Dance 2015 return, except for uh, VIP. I guess Smosh couldn't make it this time around. We also have two new modes, uh, Dance Quest and Showtime. Dance Quest is a themed way to play some of the songs against friends or CPUs. Think of it like uh, Mario Kart, with how in that game you can pick certain cups to play with either friends or CPUs. Now just replace kart racing with dancing, and you got Dance Quest. You have multiple quests to pick from, like cake, roller, keyboard, disco, and rainbow. Showtime is a pretty interesting mode. It's basically auto dance, but with filters. You would think this would make it look a lot cooler. No, it doesn't. Now, unlike every mainline game since 2, Just Dance 2016 has no DLC, but rather they introduce a subscription service called Just Dance Unlimited. Overall, great entries in the series that has uh, given me hope that the mainline quality won't diminish again, and that 2015 was, was just a fluke. Right? Right? Just Dance Disney Party 2 was released on October 20th, 2015, and is the last Disney Just Dance game. This is the most disappointing Just Dance game I have ever played. You would think titling this Disney Party 2 would make it more Disney songs from their movies, TV shows, and maybe even some more rides, but you'd be wrong. Dead wrong. This game is just an advertisement for the Disney Channel. There is not a single song here from the movie, only the TV shows, and there's 
barely any variety in the songs. There are four Austin and Allie songs, three Liv and Maddie songs, five Descendants songs, and six from the Teen Beach movie franchise. We have never had an artist in the mainline or spin-off games have more than two songs in one game. There is a good reason why we haven't had a spin-off game since 2014, and this is clearly why. Remember when I said Just Dance Wii U was the last installment in the Japanese Just Dance games? Well, I kinda lied, because Yokai Watch Just Dance Special Version is actually the last one, releasing on December 5th, 2015. I'm not really sure how we got a Yokai Watch crossover of all things, but this is a pretty good game. It features songs mainly from the Yokai Watch anime, but also has some of the songs from the games as well in there. Unfortunately, that means we have a lot less songs to work with than usual, and by a lot less, I mean 10. We only have 10 songs in this game. Despite that shortcoming, this is a still pretty good game. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about what I got for this game. It's, uh, it's, it's good. Just Dance 2017 was released on October 25th, 2016, and it's another solid title. Not amazing or anything, but pretty fun time. The backgrounds are pretty creative, with a scuba diver in a fish tank in Cake by the Ocean, the club from Cola Song being the exact same as in Mr. Saxo Beat, a candy wonderland in Oshi Oshi, and LED billboards in Whenever I Go. Then you got some that just hit the ball out of the park, like with What is Love, starting with a guy singing at a karaoke bar, but then he gets sucked inside the TV and ends up in the skies of fucking Olympus, which then transitions us to a rave on top of the clouds. Then we have Single Ladies, which has silhouettes of women in the background that move around a lot. And then in Don't Stop Me Now, th this song, it has the most creative background in the entire franchise, and one of the best dances as well. It it's all just perfect. Speaking of dances, they're all great in this game. Hips Don't Lie is a really fun dance that utilizes your hips, who would have guessed. We have another Miku song in Puppy Po, which has references to the music video in its dance. Drago Sun Dinte has a fantastic dance and a great background with the plane flying through the sky and Tex parachuting to the ground. The song choices for the most part are great. I already mentioned several great songs from this game already, but we also have September, I Love Rock and Roll, Scream and Shout, and Into You. We also have our second good Christmas song in the series in Last Christmas, a surprisingly good Halloween song with Ghost in the Keys. There are two songs here though that aren't very good, sadly. Sorry is a bad song and has one of the worst backgrounds in the entire series. It genuinely hurts my eyes to look at it. Watch Me is here as the hip popular song of last year. It has a background that's just solid colors with the lyrics on them. A lazy dance, that is just what the lyrics tell you to do, which was already a bad dance. The modes in this game are the same ones as usual. Sweat, mashup, community remixes are all the same as they were in 2016. Alternate routes are the most creative yet. We got the usual extreme and exercise routes, but then we have a panda version of Don't Stop Me Now, which has us going back to and seeing all the backgrounds on past games from 2014 to now. A helmet version of Radical, which features the same coaches as animals. A return of the sumo routine for Hips Don't Lie. And a car version of What Is Love that references the funny meme. Dance quests get some new quests like Snack, Strong Women, and High Energy. We also have a new mode in the Dance Machine mode. This mode sees two aliens kidnapping coaches to have their dance energy power their ship so they can leave. This mode is awful. What this mode does is have you dance to different genres like rock, ballet, Russian hip-hop, which exclusively uses twerking, to power up batteries for each respective genre. And the more you play, the more genres you unlock. The problem is, it's not fun. 
A lot of these dances just suck, like, who wants to dance to a conductor conducting music? No one, that's who. Just like 2016, this game had no DLC, but instead updates to Just Dance Unlimited. We got some previous songs from earlier mainline games, some from Just Dance Kids, surprisingly enough, and 13 new songs. And two new alternate tracks, one from Chihuahua, which now features Barbie dancing to it, and one for Wake Me Up Before You Go Go, which now features Gene Jailbreak and High Five from the Emoji Movie. Overall, this is a pretty good installment, nothing too groundbreaking like for 2014, but definitely getting up there in quality. Just Dance 2018 was released on October 24th, 2017, and it's alright. You got some generally creative backgrounds, like 24k magic having everything gold in the background, even having a gold sea with golden yachts, and automation we're in a robot storage facility, while this robot is just going at it. Bubble Pop were in a bubblegum factory, Footloose were an office worker causing mayhem in the office, Diggy has trumpets and our brass instruments appearing in the background, Fight Club has a post-apocalyptic city in the background that gains color later on, Daddy Cool returns from Just Dance 3 but isn't the version from the contest, but rather a new version that's now a river ride through a jungle. Love Ward has everything themed around nurses, health, and medicine, but also has Miku in the same clothes as in the music video. Now those were the only routine in the game I didn't have a problem with. All the other songs I have at least one problem with. Another One Bites the Dust, a fantastic song, has a lackluster dance and a horrible background. Dharma just copies what Hey Boy Hey Girl did in Just Dance 3. How Far Will I Go starts with the beach area she's at in the movie during a song, but then for some reason uses the background from your welcome in the middle of the song and then uses the one for I am a wanna for the end? Beep beep, I am a sheep is here for some reason. And has an all right dance. In the Hall of the Pixel King is just so retro the song. Blue has a fantastic background, a great coach design, but a horrible cover and a terrible dance. Carmen Overturn is trying to recapture the magic of William Ten Overturn, but doesn't go far enough with it. But it does have the funny Freddy Fazbear part. <laughs> and make it shakel. Oh. Boy, where do I start with you? Make It Jiggle is the worst song in the franchise. It's a bad song, a bad Christmas song, has a terrible background trying way too hard to seem cool and hip with the kids. And the dance, dear god, the dance. Three fourths of this dance is just twerking. And then you got this fucking moose. They engineered this moose to have a fat, Fucking ass. You can see it bounce when he's twerking. What were they thinking? <sighs> now I could continue going on and on about the rest of the dances and songs in this game, but they just all boil down to being alright. Well, there is one more song I can talk about, but this one makes you work to get it. In this game, they decided to change the unlock system for alternate routes and other stuff back to random chance through a gacha machine now. You're most likely to get avatars or stickers from the machine, except for one type of sticker, the CD cover style. Collecting all 10 versions of this sticker will unlock the song All You Gotta Do, Just Dance's new theme song created for the series. Now, this is all fine and dandy, except for the fact it's random what you get from the gacha machine. So it could take 10 minutes to get all collectibles for the song, or five years. I didn't get to unlock the song. The modes in this game are interesting to say the least. World Dance Floor and Just Sweat are the same as always, and alternate routes thankfully haven't dropped in quality, with four extreme routes, a tomato version of Automation, and a stunt version of another one bites the dust which is way better than the normal routine. You now have to jump across cars and avoiding danger. We also have the introduction of three new modes, Dance Lab, Kids Mode, and Double Rumble. Dance Lab is this game's version of Dance Machine, but it's even worse this time around. Kids Mode is if Just Dance Kids was done by the main Just Dance team. This game falls into the same problems as Just Dance Kids, with it having no reason to exist. 
you can even argue now that it's taking development time away from making the main songs good. Double Rumble is a mode exclusive to the Nintendo Switch version of the game. It has you utilize both Joy-Cons and uses our HD Rumble to simulate tools, maracas, cooking, and other activities. Just like the previous two games, this one had updates through Just Dance Unlimited. We got a few new songs, a Switch exclusive song featuring Rabbit Peach from Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle to advertise that game, and returning songs from previous Just Dance games. Surprisingly, this also includes 14 songs from Dance with ABBA. We even got a new version of Dancing Queen with this batch. This opens the door from songs from like Michael Jackson The Experience or even a Black Eyed Peas Experience to show up in Unlimited, which is a very exciting prospect for the future. I am praying this game is just a bump in the road and we'll be back to that high quality in 2019 because there are some great songs and good ideas here, it's just some fall flat on their face in execution here. Just Dance 2019 would be released on October 23rd, 2018, and is another really great title, thank god. We have some really good backgrounds in this game. An Art Deco inspired background in A Little Party Never Killed Nobody, an arcade inspired one with a character selection screen, an Atari styled pixel art in Fire, an oddly political routine in Mural SC de Campane, where this superhero guy stops all political arguments through dance. One Kiss has a projector casting onto the background, which leads to some really sick visuals. New Reality also has a sick style to it. Bum Bum Tam Tam has its background done in collaboration with graffiti artist Alberto Villagiano, which is neat. New World has this cyberpunk background with holograms of fish and dragons floating about. And I'm Still Standing has debris constantly trying to hit the coach. The dances are pretty good as well. Like with Rhythm of the Night, you get to do a little shimmy in the psychedelic looking background. Water Me, you're doing a groove as the moose watches from the distance. And Me 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 has a nice sway to its dance. Me 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 also has one of the coaches animated in stop motion, done by Inspira, which is Pretty cool. Speaking of coaches, this is the first time in a while where I feel like the Just Dance team got really creative with all the coach designs. We got a Jelly Mocap Man, a Robot Dinosaur, Aliens, Anubis, a Voodoo Puppet, an Invisible Man, a Gorgon, and a Tree, and a Knight. For modes, we only got Sweat, Kids, Alternate Routes, and World Dance Floor. For the Unlimited updates, we got 12 new songs, a new Extreme Route, and some returning songs from past games. Ooh, here's a fun fact I have about this game. The song, Nice For What by Drake, was originally in the game, but due to licensing issues, it had to be removed from the game through an update, making it lost to time forever. Unless you had gotten the Wii version of Just Dance 2019. That's right, Just Dance has still been releasing on the Wii for every single game, for some bizarre reason. And since the Wii's internet has been offline, there was no way to remove the song from this version of the game. Anyways, this game is great and I'm... I am praying this is going to start a, a new age for the Just Dance series. Please. I'm praying. Just Dance 2020 was released on November 5th, 2019, and is another banger of a game. We got some really good routines in this game, like Always Look on the Bright Side of Life, which has a stage show style background that is better than every single background in Dance on Broadway. Bad Boy has a great dance and a fantastic background that transitions from day and night. Fancy Footwork has this guy just grooving in this restroom with one of the sickest backgrounds in the series, and Skip It we also have some great routines in here, like Just an Illusion, Everybody, I Like It, Bangarang, and Old Town Road, which has a killer background as well. Baby Shark is here as our trendy song for the game, which isn't that bad, honestly. It's one of the shortest songs in the game. So it doesn't overstay its welcome, thankfully. Modes in this game are the same as last time. There's actually one new mode in this game, All-Star Mode. You see, this game was released on the 10 year anniversary of the franchise. So to celebrate, the Just Dance team made the story mode to celebrate the entire franchise. The story is the panda is a 
bit lonely and goes on a multi-planet road trip where we visit a song from every mainline Just Dance game and pick up a coach from said game. When we get to the end, the panda and friends find themselves at a coliseum where the panda then activates a trap door which then transitions us to high hopes. This is one of the best routines in the franchise. The Coliseum background is phenomenal, and sometimes we go up to the clouds where we see the coaches and the panda. We then get a final cutscene where the moose drops in and all the coaches hit a ride with him to the galaxy. We'll say this, this is a great story mode. My only issue with it are some of the song choices they did. Hot and Cold, Rasputin, California Girls, and Chihuahua are pretty good picks. You're My First, The Last, My Everything is a alright pick. I would have gone with Living La Vida Loca, Love You Like a Love Song, Rock Lobster, Call Me Maybe, The Final Countdown, Crucified, or Can't Take My Eyes Off You. Starships is a pretty good representation of 2014, but I Will Survive, She Wolf, Where Have You Been, and Nitrobot are right there. Build for This is a Really bad representation of 2015. Happy, birthday, or you spin me round would have been a better representation. Especially happy as that was like the main song they used to advertise the game. Lean on me, like built for it, is not a good representation. They really should have just picked Don't Stop Me Now. I'm I'm shocked they didn't. Swish Swish is an interesting choice for 2018, but automation or despacito would have been better. Bang 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 is a interesting choice, but it should have been I'm Still Standing or New Reality. For the Unlimited updates, they decided to do a season method, where new and returning songs would get added if they were themed with the season. The first season was Winter Wonderland, where we would get three new songs and three returning songs. Going to be honest, none of these songs are wintry or wonderland. They could have added a... Uh... Oh, they already put all the... Christmas related songs in Unlimited. Probably should have gone for a different theme if they couldn't even get one Christmas song in a season. The second season was Feel the Power, a superhero themed one. Same as the first, we got three new and three old songs. Unfortunately, the songs aren't in themed with the season. Women Like Me and X, you could argue they're superhero theme, but Boys, Troublemaker, Pump Up the Volume, and Forget You, th those aren't superheroes. Those are just men. Season 3, we got Virtual Paradise with three new and three old songs, and they actually fit the theme this time. Not all of them, but Hype, Crayon, Barbara Sandrin all fit the theme. The final season for this game was It's Showtime, which featured three songs that will appear in Just Dance 2021, and three returning songs. I can't tell, honestly, if any of these songs fit the theme because the theme is shows like I guess and if that's the case why didn't they say forget you for this season it would have fit like way better well I'm glad they're adding I don't feel like dancing that's one of the best songs from Just Answer wait a minute that's a winter routine they could have had this in the first season regardless of the weird decisions they did for the unlimited seasons I'm looking forward to seeing how much better these games are getting because there actually is an improvement now On November 12, 2020, Just Dance 2021 released. I think we finally reached a game that is on par with Just Dance 4 and 2014 in terms of quality. Now, I may be a bit biased here as the game includes five of my favorite songs, but regardless of that, this game has some of the best and most creative routines in the series so far. You have this chapel background where the coach is a knight and then he gets turned evil. Runaway, you and I, has this psychedelic background that looks sick as hell. Uno has the routine take place in a sketchbook with sketches all over the back. Background, and the coaches even look like sketches. Junei Kado has these two bellhops dancing in front of an elevator while bizarre things happen in the background. The art style of this routine actually is really reminiscent of Just Dance 2 and 3, which is nice to see. Adore You has a painter who is love-stricken so much that he imagined his paintings of his love dancing with him. Kaliki Taka has a really goofy background, with cats appearing all over the place. Without Me is a, another superhero routine, but this time it has a whole ass comic happening in the background that showcases our heroes, or villains, and them defeating said villains. And Bayando is reminiscent of old karaoke videos, with the lyrics in the center of the screen, the title screen, and the VHS filter. But they also do more to make it interesting, like having split screens, silhouettes of the coach dancing, and cutting to some guy playing the piano. 
For Unlimited, we got a new batch of seasons for the game. The first season is Once Upon a Dance, a fairy tale storybook inspired season with the songs reflecting that. Love is All is Princess and the Frog, Dancing Queen has a Queen, What Does the Fox Say has Talking Animals, Born to be Wild has a Werewolf like Little Red Riding Hood, Only You, Stupid Love, Girls Like are all love stories, and Tusa and Burn are... Season 2, we got Versus, where you gotta pick a side between sassy and bubbly songs, like Bubble Pop, Gangnam Style, and Best Song Ever, or Mysterious and Daring, like Problem, Monster, and Pump It. This is probably the most creative season yet, and all the songs actually fit the theme, because the theme was built around the songs. So, none of them are out of place for once. <laughs> Season 3 is a Festival Parade inspired season. This season didn't get any new returning tracks and only three new songs, which kinda sucks. Season 4, on the other hand, is great. The Justians team has been building up to the season since season 1, as you could see a mysterious individual in every season trailer. That's because this season is a tease into Just Dance 2022, featuring two new songs from that game. We also get a plethora of returning songs to make up for last season, with Jump, Kiss You, On the Floor, Rainbow Beats, and When I Grow Up. Pretty great season to end off with one of the best games in the franchise. Let's pray they can keep up the momentum with... Just Dance 2022 was released on November 4th, 2021, and is the best game so far. Just like last time, we have some of the most creative routines in the series. We got another stop motion routine in Mr. Blue Sky. Chacharon has you playing as a wacky inflatable armed tube man, which is reflected in a dance. I'm Out of Love and Believer both look glorious and are some of the best looking routines in the franchise. Sukara has this really cool cell shaded style. Judas and Moo do some really Really creative stuff with the camera, like having it be on the ground or having to be above the coach while they're singing at it. Mood also has a ton of references to past Just Dance games in the background, like cutouts of the coaches from Dibbity Dibbity Sound, an arcade machine of fire, a poster of the superheroes from Without Me, and a painting that has graffiti by Alberto Vigiarno. You Can Dance is formatted like an advertisement for workout gear in like the 80s or 90s, with it even being on a CRTV. They even have references to other workout related coaches framed in the background. Nails, hair, hips, heels just has real people dancing to the song. Girl Like Me has the coaches be invisible people with clothes on, which is a really sick visual style. And Think About Things has a story to it, surprisingly enough. It's about an elf lad getting rejected by someone, and then he cheers himself up through the power of song and dance. There are actually a lot of routines here that have a story. Happier Than Ever starts with the coach sitting by a dilapidated mansion, and then shows us how it became that way throughout the song. Love Story is a Romeo and Juliet told through a series of paintings, which is actually reflected in the visuals as well. And unlike Romeo and Juliet, there is a happy ending to them. Last Friday Night has the coach from this song being trained by all the other Katy Perry coaches, starting with Hot and Cold, then I Kissed a Girl, Dark Horse, California Girls, Firework, and then our coach gains some confidence and breaks out into her own, and performs her own dance, while the coach from Mr. Saxo Beat comes in with a killer saxophone solo, and then all the other coaches come together at the end to dance with the main coach. This song is such a great celebration of Katy Perry and the Just Dance series, and the series in general, as you can see Rasputin, Never Gonna Give You Up, The Panda, one of the coaches from Swish Swish, and this weird cloak guy in the background. Wait a minute. That isn't just any mysterious cloak guy. That's the guy from the previous game. <laughs> you see, this game has a big story, and it has to do with these two coaches, the Traveler and Siha Nova. The story starts in Rock Your Body, which starts off in a relatively normal looking hotel lobby, but then the walls, floor, and ceiling crumble away, leaving us in an MC Escher inspired world. The song then goes on like normal for the rest of it, having a really fun dance, but at the end, we're transported back to the lobby, where we see the Traveler summon four clones in four portals. Each of the portals show a song from the game, like Think About Things, China, Mr. Blue Sky, and the beginning of this very own song. Then he summons a new portal to Levitating, which is another song from the game. We then have a bit of a time skip to save your tears, so we can assume that in this time, the Traveler and Siha Nova are now in some sort of relationship. 
The Traveler has returned from his cameo in Last Friday Night and summons a portal to see Han Nova, so she can join him in his world. They then start having a little dance, and we can see parts of Siha Nova's world starting to affect the Traveler's world. They then take a portal to Siha Nova's world and continue their dance there, but now the Traveler's world is infecting hers. This goes on to a bit until both their worlds are starting to fuse into one another. But then they are able to separate again and go to each other's portals to check out the other's world. This is a pretty neat story split across multiple songs. For Unlimited, we got the usual seasonal structure, but before that, kind of a pre-show for this season in World Tour, which just makes the uh, region exclusive songs from the game playable worldwide, which is a nice thing to do. Season 1, we have an astrology-themed season. We would get Positions, Montero, Kiss Me More, and Follow the White Rabbit as our new songs this season. And I Love It, Come On Eileen, Bad Romance Alternate Route, and Louie Louie as the returning songs. This is honestly one of the best lineups for a season ever. The theming is loose enough to where all these songs can fit, and all of them are fantastic songs. And the returning ones, we have Louie Louie, which hasn't been available to play since Just Dance 3, and Come On Eileen, which hasn't been available since Just Dance 2. For season 2, we got a surreal season, focusing on the abstract and weird. We got Bad Habits, Daisy, Malibu, and Break My Heart for our new songs. And for returning ones, we got Womanizer, Love Me Again, Can't Hold Us, and Dance. Dance being here automatically makes this the best season so far. That is one of the best songs from Just Dance 2, and the fact it was stuck on Just Dance 2 for 12 years is insane. I'm really hoping the Just Dance team keeps this momentum and makes a game that surpasses all of my expectations next. I'm praying. Please. <laughs> Just Dance 2023 edition was released on November 22nd, 2022, and is the pinnacle of Just Dance. This game is the best Just Dance game ever, like in the entire franchise, no contest. This is the biggest departure Just Dance has ever done, all of the UI is different, the profiles have been heavily expanded upon, and every single routine has the camera move around in some form now. Speaking of routines, these are some of the best in the entire franchise. BTS makes their debut in the series with two songs, Boy With Love has his toy store background while Dynamite has a retro diner. Bring Me To Life and Numb are both here, which are songs I never would have imagined being in a Just Dance game, but the Just Dance team delivered on both the songs. Stay is one of the best routines in the game, with the coach on the side of the building, and the glorious visuals that happen during the main chorus. Wouldn't it be nice is another stop motion routine done by Inspira, and this time we even get to see the making of it at the end, which is neat. Heat Waves and Top of the World are both routines that are entirely CGI, and for Heat Waves it works pretty well. Seeing this robot groove in this abandoned factory is pretty cute. Top of the World, on the other hand, is one of the weakest songs in the game. The coach being a crocodile really limits the movements he can do, making for one of the worst dances. The background is a rooftop of a theater, which is pretty creative, but doesn't work well with this coach due to him blending into the background, making it hard to make out his dances. The song is also just an advertisement for Lila Crocodile. Speaking of advertising, we got Playground here to advertise Arcane. This routine has a great Jinx cosplay, really fun dance, and a pretty good background. And Playground is the best song they could have chosen to represent the show, as it was created for it and gives you the general vibe the show is going to have. But I mean, they also could have chosen Enemy by Imagine Dragons because, you know, it's a, it's a theme song. But they probably decided against it since they already have an Imagine Dragons song in here with Radioactive. As it was, is a fun routine that has mirrors rotating around the coach and a plane flying overhead for some reason. Magic is one of the best routines in the game and has a fantastic dance. Walking on Sunshine is the most creative routine we've had in the franchise ever due to the fact the coach is one of the pictograms and they do more than just having the coach be a pictogram they have them dress up and mimic the coaches from the songs they're mimicking not to the real meat of the game the storylines that's right plural sweep a psycho follows up on the storyline of the bride and rasputin 
but things are not going well as it appears Rasputin has stood up the bride at their wedding and the bride is not taking this well. Completely tearing up all the photos of them and destroying the wedding venue and at the end when the venue is completely abandoned Rasputin shows up completely shocked at the destruction. This is a fantastic follow up on the storyline of the bride and Rasputin. This routine also is just good, has a great dance and multiple moves taken from Hot and Cold, the bride's first song. Remember that plane from As It Was? Well, that plane is the very same we see in the redone version of Toxic. It starts with our coach, Agent D, sneaking on a plane disguised as one of the flight attendants. And as she makes her way through the plane, she is suddenly ambushed by two agents. Agent D battles these two and throws them out of the plane, and is now in the luggage area, where she ditches her disguise and now is wearing her agent attire. She then avoids some lasers, fights some more agents, until she finds her way to the cockpit, where we see our pilot. She frees him and flies him to safety. This routine has such a fun dance and makes me curious if the Just Dance team will try to remake other old routines. Telephone is a routine like Last Friday Night, but instead of celebrating Katy Perry, we're celebrating Lady Gaga. We have our coach Louise Diles being framed for a crime she didn't commit, and being in prison. We then see that she is in a prison with other Lady Gaga coaches, like Adam E for Born This Way, Claire Obscure from Bad Romance, Jane Wayne from John Wayne, Shadow Rider from Judas, Icona Shard from Just Dance, who we see calling up a mysterious someone trying to get them to break her and the rest of the Gaga coaches out of prison, which must have been successful as in the next scene we're outside the prison, seen leaving with even more Gaga coaches joining us, like Indra from Rain On Me, Aroha from Stupid Love, and Countess Butterfly from Applause. All the coaches are then together making a break for it, escaping the prison. Technically speaking, this is the best Just Dance routine ever. It has one of the best main coach designs in the entire franchise. The dance is one of the most fun and just best in the series. Now for the big story of the game. Enter the dance verse. It starts with Can't Stop This Feeling, where we see one of our protagonists for the story, Sarah, hanging out with her friends watching Wanderlust, the child of the Traveler and Siha Nova, when suddenly a disco ball flies out of the screen. Sarah picks it up and sees Wanderlust beckoning her to join him, and through the powers Wanderlust inherited from his dad, he takes Sarah through the TV and on a journey in the dance verse. We see them travel to Dance City, where they meet Lissa Friday and dance for a bit. The two then leave through another portal into Sun Horizon, where we find one of the coaches from I Like It. We then take a portal to Winter Haven, where we then meet up with a coach from Temperature, do a little jig, then travel to Space, where we meet the alien coach from Sweet Sensation, do another jig, and then we take one final portal to the desert, where we find all the coaches we have danced with so far, and just hit it out. But suddenly, Dark Swan appears and captures the coaches we just met. Wanderlust opens a portal so he, Sarah, and the Disco Ball can all escape. The next song in the story is Witch, where we follow up on Dark Swan in her lair with her son Jack Rose. She transforms the coaches into her minions, portals arise from the ground leading to the other dance verses, and Dark Swan commands her army to invade these dance verses to capture even more coaches. We then go to Lou's Solar Retail Therapy, where we have our next song, Fiscal, and we see our coach, Bretziana, walk in with a boombox and starts dancing. After a lot of spinning, we see a portal open up and it's Wander Lesson Sarah asking for Bretziana to join them, and she does. The next song is Rather Be, where we are introduced to Mihai, who is a student of the flow. The flow is a magic that you interact with when you dance. Mihai in the song is looking for the master in the flow. So after jumping across some crystal, Mihai finds himself in front of the flow master, Master Panda. They do a little jig together, and Master Panda finds Mihai worthy enough, and blesses them with some of his power. Then a portal opens up, and we see Wanderla, Sarah, and Bretziana. Wanderlust then recruits Mihai due to their mastery over the flow. The next song is Locked Out of Heaven. Here we learn about how Jack Rose wanted to dance his whole life, to be celebrated and cheered on by the dance verse, but his mother rejects and suppresses these feelings he has. Wanderlust and the rest of the crew must have sensed his rebellious spirit as a portal opens up and the crew walks in to Jack Rose's room. Our penultimate song is Majesty, where we pick up right where Locked Out of Heaven ended, 
Wanderlust approaches Jack Rose, where Jack then rejects Wanderlust and turns him into a minion. Then the real fight begins. Bretziana and Mihai both fight off Dark Swan's minions and are successful at bringing them back. Jack Rose then feels regret for what he has done and frees Wanderlust from the magic as well. Everyone then meets up to face Dark Swan herself, and Sarah takes the lead. And after a long fought battle, Sarah is the victor, and Dark Swan retreats to a portal in defeat. Now that Dark Swan has been defeated, there is only one thing left to do. The final song is If You Wanna Party, an original song made for this game. It, it, it It's just an end of movie dance number. We got all of our heroes dancing along with the freed coaches, including some that weren't in the story at all. After all the dancing is done, Wanderlust and summons one last portal so Sarah can go back home. Sarah says her goodbyes to her new friends and makes her leave. Overall, pretty good story mode. Generic, sure, but nevertheless. The best routines in the story had to be Locked Out of Heaven and If You Want to Party. Locked Out of Heaven has a fantastic dance. The lyrics are actually tying into the story with Jack feeling like he's locked out of heaven. If You Want to Party is cheesy as hell, but it's a great send off to the story. Like, why wouldn't it end with a celebratory dance number? Now that the big stuff is out of the way, let's talk about the smaller things. Alternate routes are here as the only returning mode from 2022, and they're alright. A majority of them just become the easier or harder version of the song, with a few exceptions. Danger High Voltage has an alternate route that's more like a normal routine. Toxic has its original routine from Just Dance 2 without the cover song, which is pretty neat. And then we have a seed routine for Telephone that's alright. Now, as you may have caught on, I've been calling a lot of these coaches by actual names. And that's because when you pick a coach in this game, they actually tell you the names of these coaches. So that's how we got Wanderla, Sarah, Bretziana, Mihai, Jack Rose, Dark Swan, Angelina, Taylor Sway, The Showman, Louis Styles, and Agent D. We also got some names for coaches in the Avatar menu. Amanita, Kathila, Duelist, Flake, General J, Kidda, Kim No, Lizza Friday, and Scarlet Gold. Speaking of avatars, they've been greatly expanded upon in this game. Instead of just choosing an emoji of an avatar, you can now pick from a plethora of beautifully made artwork of the coaches as an avatar. You can pick a background from one of the routines in the series, and then pick a border and an alias. You can also edit how the scoring effects look and the animation that plays when you finish the song. You can also unlock new stuff for your avatar through the battle pass, because every modern AAA game has to have a battle pass. Speaking of seasons, this game has some. The first one is World Tour being a prelude to the upcoming seasons by just being a worldwide release of region lock songs, along with some new songs to plus... Yeah, for this game, the Just Dance team has gotten rid of Just Dance Unlimited and are starting fresh with Just Dance Plus, meaning the 700 or so songs that have been built up over the course of 7 years are now gone, which is definitely a choice. Anyways, the first season of Plus is Love Coaster, which is a love-themed season. For the new songs, we got ABC, which features the titular Love Coaster built by our coach Arlene after a nasty breakup. Thank You Next features the Just Dance High School from Good For You. The song has our coach Grace talking about how she's thankful for her exes, which we can actually make out as the coach is from Happy, Sorry, and Blame. She then talks about a girl named Ari who helped her out. The song then ends with her walking to class and painting over to her locker, where we see a picture of Grace in the coach from Good For You, who is revealed to be named Ari. What tennis is two aliens playing tennis? Provenza has Princess Calypso and Triton, Guardian of the Sea of Melos. And our last new song from the season is About Damn Time, featuring Angelina and Luke Cipher performing a duo routine at Scarlet's Palace. For returning songs, we got Call Me Maybe, So What, All Right, Ain't No Mountain High Enough, and Living La Vida Loca. All in all, this season is great. The next season we got is Showdown, a Eurovision inspired season. Each new song represents a different dance verse, and at the end you could vote for your favorite on Twitter. Representing Sun Horizon we got Slow Mo, Wacky Groove got Give That Wolf a Banana, Melosai Realms got Euphoria, Waste Terra got Trentinol, and Eternex got Begin. We also got a few returning songs for the season, but 
they don't really matter as it's time for Bowden. In last place, we got the Melzai Realms, which honestly makes sense. Out of all the competitors, this routine had the weakest song and dance album. In fourth, we got Wacky Groove, which also makes sense as this is one of the weaker songs here. In third, we got Waste Terra, which is a pretty good place for it. Trentinol is a fun dance, but the song is lacking. In second, we got Chernex, and in first, we have Sun Horizon by a thousand vote lead. I really feel like Eternic should have won. Begging had the best dance and is the best song in the competition. For winning, Slow Mo would get nothing. That's right. This whole competition was just for fun. This is probably my favorite season so far. It's a really fun concept holding a competition for the season, and I hope they do something like this again in future seasons and maybe actually have a prize for the winner. Separate from the season, we also got early access for a limited time to a Just Dance 2024 song, Sale, which is showing that, yes, they are going to be keeping the quality high for the next game, thank god. The next season is Beach, Summer, and Vampires, where we take a vacation to Sun Horizon and relax. Not really sure why vampires are involved, but because of that, we got Bloody Mary, Sacrifice, and DJ Got Us Falling In Love. For the summer aspect of the season, we got Sunroof, and, and that's about it. Honestly, they should have just made this a spooky theme season if they were only going to do one summer song. At the very least, Sunroof is one of the best routines in the game. And just like last season, we had a song released unrelated to the season. And this time, it was the theme song for Miraculous Ladybug, which is cool, I guess. The costumes are pretty good and the background is neat, but the dance is just not it. It is way too easy and boring. Would have loved to see a harder routine for this song. And our last and final season is Just Dance 2024 edition, Celebration. It's a selection of songs from the next game. And that is Just Dance 2023. It truly feels like Just Dance has found its groove again with this fantastic game. I am praying, praying the next game doesn't immediately fall off like 2015. And given the 2024 songs I've played, it appears that wouldn't be the case. On October 24th, 2023, Just Dance 2024 edition was released and is currently the most recent Just Dance game. We have a lot of great routines here. Aquaida is an interesting routine. It has this eeriness about it, and while not being a horror dance, this is probably the closest thing we've gotten to that. Can't Tame Her is one of the best songs in the game. It has a very fun dance, a background that keeps breaking apart and coming back together, and a mid-song costume change along with a complete background change. All of this just comes together for one of the best routines in the franchise. And fun fact, the main coach of the song, Clementine, is played by Lil Sia, a popular Just Dance YouTuber, which I think is the first time we've had that happen. I'm not counting Smosh. Flowers is another fantastic routine. The coach design, great, I love her. The background, wonderful. It's just a house of sheets flying around that go rainbow sometimes, but that is doing something for me. I Want to Dance with Somebody is the main routine they use to actually advertise the game, and for a good reason. It's a fun routine where we see our main coach April dancing in a record shop, only to be accompanied by the coaches from You Can Dance, Bayando, and later on, the female coach from Stop Movin' and the gold coach from Just an Illusion. Now, all these coaches being here actually makes sense. All of them are related to the 80s in some way. You Can Dance's routine is based off 80s exercise commercials, Baleando is a karaoke video from the time, and Just an Illusion released in the 80s. It's the most wonderful time of the year, is the best Christmas song in the entire franchise. Instead of going for the blues like all the other Christmas songs, it goes for more reds, greens, and golds for its color palette. The background is also quite creative with it being a factory for Christmas decorations and trees. It has such a whimsical and joyous energy about it. Wasabi and Rapper's Delight are both animated routines done by Eddie. Rapper's Delight is done with claymation and shows our coach Kaz going around New York City. This routine is very charming. Everything about it just comes together for this one. Wasabi is done with 2D animation and shows us two women dancing on planets. One represents the sun while the other represents the moon. 
I feel like I'm getting very repetitive now, but this is one of the best routines in the series. Dance, fun, character design, some of the best in the series. Background, one of the best, especially the end where the two plants collide. We also have a large amount of songs here that are sequels to previous songs. Grades takes place right after Sunroof and shows us Scotty's dreams. I'm Good is a futuristic version of I'm Blue, which makes sense because I'm Good is actually a remix of I'm Blue. Wolf is a continuation of Tennis where we follow up on the aliens in her ship. Seven sees the return of Hayes from Boy With Love. Here For Me has Moth again from Goodwin's return in the exact same place, except now the lights are off and there are butterfly shadows everywhere. My Name Is has the superheroes from Without Me return alongside the evil mushroom lady in the worst song in the game. Vampire ends the storyline set up in Thank You Next where we actually see Ari and Grace together dancing. Shine a Little Love is a celebration of not only the panda and the moose, but also all the previous stop motion routines like Me 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 and Soyo. I Am My Own Muse follows Rasputin at the end of Sweep a Psycho where we see him lamenting his actions and praying to see the bride again. Gimme More follows up on where Toxic ended, with Agent D defending the pilot from Secret Agents. It's here where we also find out the coaches from Work Work, Toxic, and the extreme version of Circus were all just Agent D in disguise. When the pilot is finally safe and sound with Agent D, he decides to press a big button, which launches a plane out of Agent D's lair. For alternate routes, we got some pretty good ones here, like a paper version of Cure For Me which outshines the standard routine, a fitness version of Flowers that's just as good as the original, and the extreme routines which are all pretty good and challenging in this game. Alright enough stalling, time to get to the real meat of the game, the new story mode. We start off in Canned Heat, which starts as our introduction to all of our key players. First one to be reintroduced is Wanderlust, who is hanging out in the lobby of the dance verse. We then got Britziana, who is hanging out by the beach. Mihai, who's in their room practicing their flow, Sarah, who is at a party, maybe, and Jack Rose, who is no longer under his mother's control and can dance freely now. Now that we've met our cast, it's time for a little disco party. And look at that, Sarah wants our disco ball friend, but <gasps> it was the Night Swan this entire time. And she has taken the disco ball captive and corrupted it. We now go see the real Sarah, who is currently playing Just Dance with her friends. And look at that, it's our pal Wanderlust with the disco ball, who was captured by Night Swan. Wait, how did, how did he get that back? Well, that's because this isn't Wanderlust, it's the Night Swan! And she has sucked Sarah back into the dance verse to corrupt her, and she succeeds at doing so, all the while the real Wanderlust watches from the lobby. The Night Swan then tries to corrupt Bretziana, who was able to fight off the Night Swan's magic through the power of love or determination. After that, Wanderlust recruits her. Mihai was continuing their flow training in the Panda Temple, even unlocking a new panda form for themselves. But the Night Swan started to corrupt the Sacred Land and forced Mihai to retreat back to reality, where Wanderlust opens a portal to recruit them to help save Sarah. Now that Wanderlust had two of the Just Dancers, all that was left was Jack Rose. But the Night Swan has gone to him before Wanderlust, and shows Jack a vision of what could be if he joins her, if he lets her treasure him. After failing to get in contact with Jack, the remaining Just Dancers decide to storm Night Swan and save Sarah themselves. Which they try to do, but one by one they fall, only leaving Mihai, who uses the last of their strength to send their flow to Jack Rose, to show him what's happening, as all the Just Dancers become corrupted by the Night Swan. We then see our corrupted Just Dancers dancing on Night Swan's ship, with no one coming in to save them showing the Night Swan has actually won and is about to wreak havoc on the rest of the dance verse, with no one to stop her. All except one, Jack Rose, who comes out of the dock where Night Swan's ship is, but he was too late to stop her, and now no one can. And that's where the story mode ends. This story mode makes the previous one look like garbage in comparison. The intro is way better and doesn't drag for as long. Stronger is an incredibly fun dance and improves upon the first Bretziana song. Treasure is the best song in the game, and maybe the whole franchise. The colors of the routine being gold, purple, and red, and being locations from Locked Out of Heaven, tells us that this is just a dream, an illusion the Night Swan is using the trick Jack. And the camera constantly moving and switching angles is great, especially the selfie angle, that was just fun. Tainted Love is a great number to end on, to show the Night Swan's victory over the Just Answers, and have you realized throughout the song, she has won. No one's coming to save them. 
As this is the most recent game, and updates are still coming out for it, there are only two seasons I can discuss right now. Disney Magical Time is the first, and this season would bring over a bunch of Disney songs from the franchise, including some new ones like A Whole New World, Zero to Hero, I'll Make a Man Out of You, and When Will My Life Begin? This season is exactly what I wanted out of Disney Party 2. It expands on exactly what I wanted from the sequel, and the routines look fantastic. All Make a Man of You has actual real people in the background doing stuff, instead of it just being PNGs like every other Disney routine in the series. Zero to Hero is everything I would have wanted out of a Hercules routine, and a whole new world is... The current season is Y2K, focusing all things early 2000s with all the songs this season releasing in that era. Except for Boys of Liar Part 2, but eh. All of them have great dances and backgrounds like Hollaback Girl, Boys of Liar, and Skater Boy. And those are all of the seasons so far for the game. Overall, I would say this game is on par if not slightly better than 2023, just because of Can't Tame Her, Flowers, and Treasure. When I was starting out this project, I was expecting most of these games to be complete schlop, but I was pleasantly surprised on the quality of a lot of these titles, and I'm an, an actual fan of this series now. I could continue going on and on about the scrap songs of the series, the live show, or even some of the events surrounding the franchise, but I think I know what I need to do. Good and Kimata. 